I, like you, have had my heart broken into a thousand million tiny little shards of broken glass. If you're like me, this has happened more than once. Nothing prepares you for that horrible state of being you're left in after a monumental rejection where you truly, honest to God, fully open your heart to someone else, only to get rejected for something, someone better. It can be enough to make you want to close up and never give your heart to anyone again. The one thing people go through these times tend to forget, you're not alone. It's happened to most of us at some point. The pain will go away in its own way in time. Life will return to some semblance of normal. You'll laugh again, smile more, even find yourself open to maybe trying again with someone else. But not in the moment. In the moment, it is just you and heartbreak. And if you're really lucky, you'll find something to help you somehow move forward even if it's just a few inches at a time. When I got my heart broken, I felt all alone, like no one could help. It was just me and the pain. <laughs> but there was one thing I did have, Halo Reach. When I was in college, I fell really hard for this girl. I thought it was gonna be the start of a serious long-term relationship, until she told me that despite us dating for some time, she was still in love with her ex and was getting back together with him. Well, shit. <laughs> Look, I could go on and on about how terrible it all was, and it'd be true. It was awful. <laughs> it felt like someone had kicked my heart in the balls with plus 10 poison boots or something. <laughs> it was probably the biggest heartbreak I'd ever experienced. Fortunately, this story has a happy ending. My beautiful wife and I are about to celebrate 10 years of a really great marriage and we have two absolutely beautiful wonderful little kids and we're all really happy together but when I was 20 and got dumped by a girl for her ex it just sucked you know after I found out that she chose her ex over me I was pretty depressed left to deal with all those feelings of rejection and betrayal by myself I didn't want to eat or exercise or see friends or talk about it or anything all I wanted to do was sleep, and during the initial weeks after I got dumped, I tried to distract myself with anything I could. Nothing worked. Well, almost nothing. Halo Reach worked. Thank God I had wisely spent some of my student loan money on an Xbox 360. I only had two games, but they were both absolute winners, Gears of War and Halo Reach. I'd always been a fan of the Halo series, even reading the incredible books that really gave the whole world of Halo and the Master Chief a ton of depth and believability. I loved playing with my friends and roommates, and we'd often stay up into the early morning playing. But after that relationship with that girl ended, I found myself playing Reach with far more focus than I was used to. Reach gave me an escape when I thought there was none. It gave me something to strive for, to practice, to be better at, to learn. Which for me, was infection mode. Infection, or zombies as it was commonly called, is an online multiplayer game mode in Halo Reach found in many FPSs, where some players are zombies and everyone else are humans, and the zombie players must attempt to kill the humans, turning them into zombies one by one until there are no more humans left to hunt. I love the zombies mode. It was an incredibly fast paced game where in 20 seconds you can go from outnumbering the zombies like five to one to then being outnumbered yourself 10 to one. Being the last remaining human was the best part. The only weapon the zombies could use was the up close energy sword and the feeling of having like 11 high powered superhuman killers with energy swords all chasing you while you're plowing through them with your rapidly depleting shotgun shells, pure adrenaline. This was the game mode that got me through being dumped. I actually got pretty good at zombies. There was one game where I think I had like 62 kills as the final human survivor, which my roommate couldn't quite believe. I remember him being so awestruck, he quickly took a picture of the end game screen for proof. I never found out if it was a record or anything, but it definitely felt like it. I memorized all the maps, I learned all the tricks, 
I was getting better and better at headshots. Basically, I had something to do and instead of remember that I got dumped by a girl for her ex. For months, Halo Reach gave me focus on something else other than my bad feelings swooning through my head whenever I wasn't playing. The thing about video games is, unless you're like a professional gamer or something, you don't like get money or awards for playing. And frankly, most programmers don't even make that much money anyways. So, no matter how good I was at Halo Reach my 20s, it wasn't like helping my resume or anything. It wasn't helping me get a job or lose weight or help me earn money or anything that's traditionally labeled as progress, you know. it's. One of the main reasons why so many self-help gurus criticize video games and people who play them bemoaning young men to level up in real life instead. That girl I liked was having a great time with her ex and ultimately I was alone playing video games. Not exactly the most inspiring setup when you think about it. But that's not how I saw it. I wasn't trying to make money or improve my resume or anything like that playing Halo Reach. I was dedicating myself to solving problems challenging myself, and focusing on getting better against difficult competitors, all of which required focus, discipline, and poise. I was just trying to get through a hard time in my life, and Halo Reach gave me that. What these video games are a waste of time people don't understand is that the magic of video games is not that you can maybe earn money or something from them. Video games are special, among many other reasons because they can give you a sense of purpose and focus during times when you're adrift in life and still figuring shit out, getting laid off, nursing a broken heart, or finding out what you want to do with your life. That's what Halo Reach did for me. That's what it was for me. A chance to work on myself in some small way while my broken heart was still healing from getting dumped. It gave me a purpose to not just scroll on social media all day or lay in bed until noon, or wallow in self-pity that things were working out the way I wanted. The game helped me connect with my friends and roommates and people who love me during a time when I didn't want to talk to anyone. But we could play Halo together, and maybe without realizing it, I'd find myself laughing and joking with my buddies instead of torturing myself wondering what that girl and her ex were up to, why she chose him over me, what I could have done different, and on and on. I played a lot of Halo Reach for a while there. They got pretty good. And it even gave me the courage to check out some local Halo tournaments and meet other people just as obsessed as me. But eventually, I realized that it was time to move on in real life. And I did. Soon after that time, after using video games as a temporary tool to get through a difficult time, I realized that I could probably use some more permanent formal help, like therapy. It wasn't just for the heartbreak of one girl, it was for lots of things. Stuff with my dad, my self-image, and with how I view the world. And I did. Shortly after that time, after I met my now wife, I started really working on myself through therapy and journaling and brutal honesty about my shortcomings. And look, this motivation wasn't all from Halo Reach or video games, that's silly. But having an activity like Halo was part of it. The cycle of focus practice, discipline, and repetition kind of helped prime me for improving in other areas of my life. Which, now that I play fighting games, I can really see how video games can help you focus more and challenge you to be your best in the face of overwhelming, difficult, powerful resistance to your progress. After college, after I moved out and found new roommates who didn't play Halo, and after I got a job and got engaged and started life in my 20s, I didn't play Reach as much. I guess I just got busy with all the other stuff, which included plenty of gaming, not just Halo. But for me, whenever I think back to that time in college when I got dumped, I can't think of that heartbreak without also thinking of Halo Reach too. Because ultimately, Halo Reach helped give me focus when someone had broken my heart. And it gave me the first small kindling I could use to start a fire and really get motivated to be better. Not just at killing the Covenant or zombies, but to be a better person. That might sound silly, maybe a bit unbelievable, but honestly, that's the power of video games for me. Games like Halo Reach struck me so much that I still think back to specific memories of them over a decade later. So much so that I was inspired to make a whole video about it. Look, 
Video games can't solve everything. And there's lots of ways you can use them in unhealthy ways that don't help you make progress. But for me, Halo Reach helped me. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. Thanks for watching. And if you wanna watch more content like this, be sure to click that subscribe button.